All right, today I'm going to show you how to make rain. And we're going to do some just really simple techniques, uh, but some that might be useful to you just to get uh, an atmospheric sort of rain look. So I took just a simple image here that I have, uh, which has already been edited and composited and kind of has a dark look, and I wanted it to look rainy. And so what I'm going to do now is place a layer above whatever my background layer is, just a blank layer, any layer will do. I'm going to get white for my foreground color. If you don't have that, you can hit D as a shortcut to set black and white as your uh, foreground background. And then you can hit X to toggle between the black and white for your foreground and background colors. So I'm going to have white as my foreground right now. And I'm going to go get my brush tool. In my brush tool, I'm going to make sure my opacity is all the way up, flow is all the way up. Just get a simple round brush in this case and uh, you can right click to get your brush properties I want to get my hardness up probably all the way I can blur it later on if I want to but I don't want to have to sharpen it later on so I get my properties for the hardness all the way up to 100 percent now I'm gonna shrink my brush size down my uh, white brush and just put some white dots in here now this is uh, not gonna look a whole lot like rain right off the bat so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that a little bit later on but for right now, just put same size, all these dots, and spread them out. Once you get a good number of them in your image, then you can right-click, get to your brush properties, and raise your master diameter up just a little bit. Maybe uh, three-quarters or twice the size of the brush you just had. So I'm going to get a little bit bigger one, drop it in here and just spread it in between all the smaller dots that I already painted and once I get it full about to where I think I want it then for my purposes this time I'm going to do one more variation so I'm going to change my size again um, maybe go a little bit smaller this time some some really small ones and uh, just drop it in between there and the reason I'm doing this is because it gives it a variation uh, to the drop sizes that we're going to create and it makes it look a little bit more randomized and and less like uh, it was generated by any sort of filter or machine so it's a good technique here now that I've got that and I have a scene full of these little dots then what I can do to turn them into uh, what looks like rain streaks is just while I have the same layer selected I'm going to go up to my filters, blur, motion blur, and in the motion blur I'm going to have my settings, uh, in this case because of the size of my image my distance is going to be around 100 something like that and you can take your angle and adjust the direction of the motion blur and in this case I kind of want it to look as though we've got some wind which is blowing the rain from right to left so I'm going to give it an angle around uh, 60 degrees and once you work that out and you can see in the preview how it's going to look and you like it then hit OK now as I zoom in I've got some nice rain streaks and blur but it's still a bit uh, vague and faded so I want it to be a little bit more defined and what I can do now that I have this base rain layer is I can actually copy it and I can paste it in as many different places in the image as I want and I'm gonna have a little bit of a variation let me illustrate that to you I'm just gonna take my layer that the rain is on drag it down to create new layer I'll end up with a second rain layer and you'll see it's more defined there but I actually don't want it in the same place so I'm just gonna take my move tool which is V on the shortcuts I'm gonna move it around a little bit and I'm going to adjust the opacity of the overall layer just a little and this will give it a little variation so where it doesn't look as though you just use the same layer over and over again I'm going to take this again drop it to new layer and you'll notice that the opacity re remains the same when you uh, copy one layer uh, and you get a copy of it the opacity does not change so I already have the opacity at 41 percent like I had set on my last one drag it over here I'm gonna copy it again shortcut for that is control J by the way it's much faster than dragging it down 
Now I've got a good amount of little rain streaks here in the front. Of course, if you want it to be more defined and you really do want it to be bright, you can actually copy your original layer as many times as you want. Each time you copy it, it'll make it a little bit brighter, if that's what you desire. In this case, I don't want it quite that bright, so I'm going to drop uh, those layers back in the trash. But that's just a technique that you can use if you want. Now I'm going to create some background rain because there should be rain in the distance and it wouldn't be this big. But I don't want to go through all the trouble of making the dots, so what I'm going to do for the background rain is I'm actually going to create a new layer on top of my base layer. I'm going to fill it with black and if you have your foreground background set by default to the foreground white and the background black then you can fill it with black by hitting control backspace otherwise you can go up to your edit fill and choose uh, that function. Now that I have it filled with black you'll notice I can't see anything I just got this black layer over top of it I'm going to add noise to it. You can do that, go up here to filter, noise, add noise. Now the add noise dialog here is pretty simple. There's not much for you to choose from. We want to leave it monochromatic. We don't want any colors in it. And we're going to bring the amount up. So in this case, I'm going to bring the amount to uh, probably right about here. It's We can always drop the opacity later if it's too bright but we want to be able to see it. So we have the selection of uniform or Gaussian. And in this case, I'm going to select uniform, which will give me a more even distribution of the noise. And I'm going to bring the amount up just a bit. Now that I've done that, go back into filter, blur, motion blur. And now for this, we don't want quite as much distance because it's further away. So we're just going to drop the distance down a bit. Going to leave the angle the same. Hit OK. Now, we've got a nice background rain, but because it's on a black layer, we can't see what's underneath it. And an easy way to remedy that is just to go up here to set the blending mode for the layer. And drop down, set the blending mode for the layer on screen. And now we have a lot of background rain, which actually is a little more than I want at the moment because uh, it's all over my image. I kind of want it to be further off in the background. So I'm looking at it from far away and it kind of washes out my image. So what you can do here is add a layer mask to your image. And you can fill your layer mask with black by going to the edit fill. And then uh, in this case I'll use foreground color. Or you can just choose black. Fill it black. Hit OK. Now it all disappeared. So now I'm selecting my layer mask here on this new little rain layer I created. And I want it to appear behind the people, but not in front of them. So I'm going to get my brush, my round brush again. I'm going to bring the diameter of the brush up. And I'm going to reduce the hardness. I'm just going to take it all the way down to zero. I'm also going to take the opacity down to about 20%. Now that I have the opacity and the diameter changed, I'm just going to paint white. Make sure your foreground color is white. I'm going to paint white into the background. And as I paint and touch my pen to it several times, it creates thicker and thicker rain layers. I want some over this background guy because he would have a little bit over him. Some over the trees. And I really want the rain to wash out everything as it fades to the background to show that it really is a heavy torrential rain. So I'm just going to keep painting on with about 20% opacity. And uh, you can change your brush size depending on the image, whatever you need, and paint it in. Now you can see it affecting the back trees. And when I get it to just about where I think I want it, then I can just leave that mask like that. And I can always alter this at any time if I decide I want a little bit more rain. Maybe put a little bit over the foreground character just to give it a little more washed out look. Just not as much as it had before. Uh, I'm going to back off. There it kind of looks like I have a little bit of a torrent coming down in the background. And this is a technique for uh, creating simulated raindrops 
in the foreground and the background. Now you can use this and make bigger or smaller drops, whichever you'd like. I hope this helps you out a little bit with creating fake rain in your scene and giving a little bit more atmosphere to your image.